News 8's Heather Hope has more on how this trial is going. We got an up close look of the UC San Diego COVID-19 vaccine trial process where the mayor of National City brought us along in hopes to calm fears of the entire vaccine trial. I'm be very calm. I think I get a lollipop after this. National City Mayor Alejandra Sotelo Solis getting blood drawn part of her second appointment of the UC San Diego Health COVID-19 vaccine trial for Johnson & Johnson. That is just one injection she got last month and she said it felt like getting the flu shot. You feel that intramuscular soreness? I felt that probably for about four days. Um, but nothing, a little stretch and some ice didn't take care of. Um, and then the day after I did have a slight headache. So we were monitoring that. She gets paid $100 as a trial participant for two years. As a leader, I want to dispel those fears, start talking about it. Dr. Mark Sawyer of Rady Children's Hospital just voted on the FDA vaccine panel to get one approved soon to use in the U.S. I definitely voted in favor of this. Uh, this is a real breakthrough for us. So when can we expect the final approval from the FDA? Uh, we're expecting it within days, and we're also expecting the CDC, which is meeting today and again on Sunday, to prepare exact recommendations for how to use the vaccine. San Diego County could get its first allotment of the Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine this weekend, with immunizations beginning soon after. There are plans well in place to distribute the vaccine immediately. As for those still on the fence about getting the vaccine. Everybody needs to get this vaccine, I, I had hope. an aunt that said, well, Mija, why are you doing this? And I said, well, what do you mean? And she says, well, why you? Why do you have to be the one? And I said, why not me? Despite concerns the vaccine was fast-tracked, doctors urge that it will be safe. Well, I'm expecting by Monday we're going to have the overall, uh, all of the guidelines in place. The approval is already going to be in, in place. And although there are about 60,000 participants nationwide, 2,000 here in San Diego County, UC San Diego Health still looking for more participants. If you'd like to join or find out more information, you can go to their website at covidvaccinesd.com. Heather Hope, News 8. All right, thanks, Heather. And for more information and a link to our latest stories on the vaccine, just text the word vaccine to 858-571-8888. Another record tonight for new coronavirus cases in San Diego County. Health officials are reporting 2,867 newly confirmed cases. That's 11% positive of 25,000 tests. 38 more people were admitted to area hospitals with COVID, four of them into intensive care. The county now with 18% of our ICU beds available. 23 additional deaths are also being reported, the most we've seen in one day. 1,137 people have now died from COVID-19 in San Diego County. Nurses and caregivers with Palomar Health are protesting what they call unsafe working conditions and a staffing ratio waiver. Nurses are also concerned about the commingling of COVID-19 patients. News 8's Teresa Sardina has more on that and what Palomar Health is saying tonight. Barbara Lee, I spoke with the CEO of Palomar Health. She says the chief nursing officer is working with nurses discussing flexibility, safety and planning. Should we get into another situation where the surge continues to increase? The nurses do have a right to be concerned. Palomar Health nurses and caregivers held a conference Friday demanding the hospital to prioritize patient safety, wanting answers to nurse to patient ratio. Caregiver Bonnie Moody contacts News 8. Her 62 year old colon cancer client is worried about co mingling between nurses and patients and requested to be released from Palomar Health Thursday night. The problem is, is that they need to, they need to not put the patients on the same area, you know, on the same unit. Uh, because the thing is, is that they don't even have them in negative pressure rooms, that the nurses walk from a, a COVID patient, take off their PPE, and then walk into the oncology room. Diane Hansen, president and CEO of Polymer Health, tells News 8 about the concerns addressed. I think the particular issue at hand is in regards to a 12-bed unit at our smallest facility in Poway. Hansen says it's an intensive care unit and Palomar Health received a waiver from the California Department of Public Health to allow placing of intermediate care level patients in that unit. 
Palomar Health has two hospitals, 288 beds in Escondido. The waiver focusing on the Poway Hospital, 107 beds, 12 beds in the ICU unit. The current nurse to patient ratio is two to one, two patients, one nurse. The waiver will allow three to one, two mid-level patients and one ICU patient, one nurse. One of the allegations was that we were mixing COVID and non-COVID patients, and that's absolutely false. Hansen says they're doing everything they can to ensure they're isolating COVID-19 patients and protecting healthcare workers. What I'm disappointed most about is the vocal few that are continuing to try to paint the picture that we are doing anything except um, doing our best to be as prepared as possible. To learn more about how Palomar Health is addressing patient safety, we'll have that at CBSH.com. Reporting at Palomar Health in Poway, Barbara Lee. I'll take it, Teresa, thank you. While we're awaiting approval for the vaccine from the FDA, the next big hurdle is convincing Americans to actually take it. Today, National Nurses United, the nation's largest nurses union, held a Facebook Live event to address the public's questions and concerns. They say that when the FDA does approve a vaccine, they will put out all the information you need. When the EUA is issued for this, um, any vaccine, the FDA will also issue guidance to patients and healthcare providers, which present information about the risks and benefits of accepting a vaccine. If you still have concerns about a vaccine, they recommend asking your doctor directly. Today, local renters protested outside the office of a law firm they say is helping throw families out on the street. Protesters rallied outside the offices of San Diego evictions on Camino del Rio South this afternoon. They say there shouldn't be any evictions in the middle of a pandemic and that Assembly Bill 3088 protects them until February 1st. The group is calling for the law firm to stop its role in evicting San Diegans and that all rent be canceled. News 8 reached out to San Diego evictions for comment. They have not gotten back to us. A search is still underway for a hit and run driver who struck and killed a woman near Fallbrook. The CHP is looking for a dark, older model pickup truck that likely has damage to the front end. The 60 year old woman and her husband were walking along Gird Road near Lake Tree Drive when she was hit just after 5 p.m. yesterday. Her husband was not hurt. Anyone with information should call the CHP at 858-637-3800. A News 8 viewer emailed us today about a string of car burglaries in his neighborhood, apparently targeting vehicles with keyless entry systems. As News 8's David Goffertson reports, the thieves may be using radio technology to break into cars with so-called smart keys. They hit, uh, I don't know, a half dozen cars on my street that had a keyless ignition. The break-ins happened early Thursday morning in Rancho Penasquitas. Burglars targeting cars with keyless entry systems, like Ray Taylor's 2019 Mercedes. The way keyless ignitions work, they put out a signal, so when you walk up to your car, your car recognizes you and unlocks itself. There is no shortage of surveillance videos on YouTube showing thieves using radio frequency relay equipment to automatically open the doors of vehicles with so-called smart keys. They're called relay attacks. The thieves use an antenna to pick up the weak radio signal emitting from the key fob inside your home. And then they relay that signal to an accomplice with a receiver near the car. They always go up by the front door because everybody keeps their keys by the front door. So they get their best signal there. So what they do, they go up to your house and they have this amplifier that picks up the signal from your key fob, amplifies it down to your car and you have an assistant by the car who opens the car once the signal gets there and they have access to your car. Taylor said the police told him about six vehicles were hit in his neighborhood. The only thing they took was my old hoodie that I kept in the trunk in case I ever got cold and that was it. And, and I guess my registration papers, which they threw out on the street. Officers could not confirm whether the Rancho Penasquitas break-ins were actually relay attacks, but Taylor says he is sure his Mercedes was locked and there was no damage to the car. 
Fortunately, there is a solution. This $20 Faraday box on Amazon shields your key fob so the radio signals can't get out. If you put your keys inside this box and there's no signal that they can pick up and send to your car and open it. Now there, we want to be sure we're not talking about these old school key fobs where you push a button and the door opens. We're talking about keyless entry systems where you put the key fob in your purse or in your pocket and you simply walk up to the vehicle and it automatically opens. Carlo? David, critical here, the video we see on the internet is of actual car thefts, the vehicles being stolen. These vehicles were broken into, they weren't taken. So do we know if this type of theft is actually happening in San Diego, this relay boosting technology? Uh, yeah, that, uh, that YouTube video you saw in our piece was not from Rancho uh, Penasquitas. We reached out to the Regional Auto Theft Task Force. We talked to a CHP captain who said he had no evidence of widespread use of this relay attack method to break into cars in San Diego, but we're going to have to wait and see what happens with the investigation in Rancho Penasquitas. Even with that, I'm keeping my keys away from that front door. David Gofferson reporting live. Thanks, David.